Welcome to Reading Public Library's Winter Warmers Extreme Cozy Edition. Um, today we are going to be spotlighting books for youth from picture books to graphic novels to young adult uh, books. I'm going to turn it over to our first um, speaker, children's librarian, Lisa Racine. Hi. Thanks so much. So happy to be here. Um, again, my name is Lisa. I'm one of the children's librarians in the children's room, and I'm here to talk to you about a couple um, really fun picture books and also graphic novels for young readers. Um, and I have a couple of them here, which is super fun. Um, we're going to start with one of my favorites. It's called Eek. <laughs> And Eek is an alphabet book, and this is my dog who also loves to read all of these books as well. Um, and uh, for all of our parents out there, we all know that we've read one alphabet book, you've read them all, right? Wrong. Eek is a delightful twist on the traditional alphabet story. It starts with a sneeze, so ah, choo, and ends with, well, I wouldn't want to give it away. This picture book's a great story to practice sounds and language with your little one, and have a lot of fun while you do it. All right, so our second book that I have today is called The Perfect Puffy Coat. And this is a story that is pretty relatable to a lot of us, even though it's about bugs. Um, we've all received a gift that maybe wasn't our style or wasn't quite what we wanted. Um, but we say thank you, we push it to the back of the closet, hope we never have to see it again. Um, but what happens when your friend really wants you to wear the giant purple puffy coat that they bought you? And they want you to wear it every day, but it just doesn't suit you. The Purple Puppy Coat is a wonderful story about friendship and being able to tell your friends the truth and find solutions to make everybody happy. And last up in our picture box is one of my all-time favorites. It's called NERP. <laughs> and it is a truth universally acknowledged that babies and toddlers will turn up their noses at perfectly good food. This is a story all full of nonsense words. However, any parent who has ever had a picky eater um, won't need a translation to understand what this book is trying to say. Um, and you get to laugh along as an alien family tries everything to get their baby to eat and enjoy the silly ending when their little one finally finds something that, I don't know if it's totally edible, but it's to their liking. So those are just a couple of picture books that are a lot of fun. Um, and I also have two great graphic novels that I want to talk to you guys today about. Um, the first one, unfortunately, I don't have it with me because someone already scooped it up and wanted to take it home. Um, but the first graphic novel is called Mup. Um, and it's a great story. Um, and it's all about a young girl who gets to meet her future self. Um, and sometimes I wonder what it would be like to meet my future self or even better, team up with my future self to save the world from impending doom and destruction, um, which is exactly what happens to six-year-old Ariana or Mup, as she's known to her dad. Um, she's a free spirit who completely dances to her own drumbeat. Um, and when she's spirited away to the future to meet herself 10 years in the future, she's horrified to find out that a teenager has taken over her body. And hopefully the two girls can find some common ground to work together. Um, and you can find out in this charming coming of age graphic novel. And our last graphic novel that we have to talk about is just here. Okay, I love it. It's really beautiful and has, there's no color in this one, but the, the artwork is really wonderful. Um, and these are all different African folk tales. And so it's called The Girl Who Married a Skull and Other African Stories. And each story is uniquely told by different authors and illustrators from the African diaspora. And whether you've heard the stories of the crocodiles voting to save a man's life and of the skull who borrowed body parts to trick a beautiful woman into marrying it, or they're stories you've heard over and over again, these versions will draw you in and keep you wanting more. Those are just a couple of the books that I've um, come across over the past year that I absolutely love. Um, but we've got a ton more on deck for you guys. Um, so up next is Olivia and she's got some really good stuff for you. Thanks, Lisa. Um, the first one I have is a middle grade novel and middle grade means it's written for nine to 12 years old and it is called King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. 
and it won the National Book Award for Young People's Literature this year. Woohoo! Um, it's all about King, that's the main character, and he just um, is going through it. He is experiencing a ton of grief, and Calendar writes in like such a way that like you experience grief in so many different ways, but one of the ways is through time. So like when you're reading this, King is his time is so extended, like the day scenes just last forever. But then King says out loud, like, wow, the time is going so fast. Like two weeks seems like nothing, but like you're experiencing it very different than he's experiencing it in the book. And it's just so well-written. Um, there's a very complicated first crush love story between King and another character named Sandy, um, which is marred by King's own grief for his brother, um, for his brother who passed away. And um, it's really interesting and nuanced in the way that like King is very angry at his brother um, right before he dies because King is unsure of his sexuality at the time and his brother says something very homophobic and so he's just really angry but he's also grieving for the brother that he loves. Um, he's also trying to find what it means to be himself and his identity and it's a, just a wonderfully beautiful written book and I would recommend it to anyone who's like been to middle school, anyone who's had a first crush or anyone who has experienced a loss because it's just a really well-written book. Next up is Joe and Lori, which is a young adult book. So we're switching gears to young adult, which is like ages 12 to 18. Um, this one's more like a new adult book because the characters are aged up a little bit. So it's like 18 to 26-ish. Um, so adults should definitely read this, especially if they love Little Women. So this was written by Margaret Stoll and Melissa De La Cruz. And if you're like me, and Sir Sharonin's portrayal of Joe March in 2019 just really made you cry. And her, especially her speech where she just goes, women, over and over again. And you frame that speech and it's hanging on your wall like mine. Then you want to read this book. Um, it's just it's so good. So this book is like a meta spiral into the Little Women universe, kind of like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Like it's a whole other universe within Little Women. So like Joe is like a surrogate to Louisa May Alcott, but she's also like the Joe March we know from the book, but she wrote Little Women. And this book takes place in between writing Little Women and writing Good Wives, the sequel. And in this book, Joe is in love with Lori. So there's a romance in this book that's not in Little Women. And so if you know, you want a book that contains multiple truths, that contains multitudes, that um, is about being independent, but also finding the love of your life, read this book. The next one on my list is a YA memoir written in verse, and it is Apple Skin to the Core, and it was nominated for a National Book Award this year. Um, I'm going to turn to a specific page while I talk about it. Um, so this book is all about Eric Gainsworth's um, life from childhood to today. And um, he is a member of the Onondaga and he grew up in the Tuscarora, Tuscarora Nation in upstate New York. Um, so this book is written in verse, like I said, so it's written like poetry and it's actually written in different structures. So it's written and like divided up by Al the Beatles albums. So the first structure is Apple Records and that's because of the Beatles company was called Apple Records and this book is called Apple um, because it's a slur toward American Indian. So that's, he's like reclaiming that word in this book. So the first section is Apple Records um, and it's the backstory of his grandparents being forced to go to boarding schools. So it's his like backstory. The second part is the Red Album, an allusion to the White Album, um, which is about his early childhood in the 1960s. And the third section is Dog Street, which is an allusion to Abbey Road. And this is a self-portrait that Eric Gonsworth drew. Um, and so it's him throughout his childhood and throughout his young adulthood crossing Abbey Road um, or Dog Street in this case. And the final section is Get Back, which is an allusion to Let It Be, the final album. And there is artwork throughout. There is um, self-portraits, there's photographs, but it's also a great audiobook, and we own it on Overdrive. So definitely listen to it and pick up the copy so you can see the beautiful illustrations inside of it. I think it's one of those books that's going to be talked about for years and years to come. Um, I think a lot of teachers are going to use it for their students, and so I highly, highly recommend it. Next up are two YA fantasies. Um, the first one um, is called Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. So this one I would describe as like 
you read or watched The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood and you thought to yourself like, you know what that could use? Some fairy tale, why not? And then if you, or if you've read or watched Cinderella and you thought, you know what that could use? Like an overarching patriarchal structure that like controls women body, women's bodies and is like really disgusting. Those two things come together in Cinderella is dead. And it's um, like a haunting fairy tale and it's a dystopia. And it's this about this amazing main character, Sophia, who really doesn't want to follow in Cinderella's footsteps. She wants to marry her best friend, Aaron. Um, so years after Cinderella's death, this society has like created a God around Cinderella and women must follow in her footsteps and go to this ball and be auctioned off to old creepy men. Um, and not every girl wants to do that. And there's like this king that his face is falling apart and he's very old and creepy, but also he looks young in the light. And there's a backstory behind that. So Sophia decides in the book that that life is not the one she wants. She runs away and tries to find a way to take down the society. And she learns about the truth about Cinderella along the way. There is a beautiful queer love story in it. And it's just really great if you like YA fantasy and you like like a dark tale, but there's always hope at the end of it. So check this one out. My next pick is probably my favorite book that I read last year. And it was also on the National Book Award long list. And it is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I wouldn't be surprised if this continues to win awards this year. I wouldn't be surprised if it wins the Prince Award. Um, this is another YA fantasy with a mix of humor and romance. Um, it follows Yadriel or Yads. Um, and it's a few days before Dia de Muertos where he accidentally resurrects a ghost that just won't go away. And that ghost, is Julian. And Julian is the best. He's a himbo, which if you don't know what a himbo is, he's just a beefy, cakey dude with not a single thought or impulse control going through his cute little brain. He's just a little dummy. And we love him and we want to protect him. And so it's it's a wonderful book. So Yads is, um, he's trans and he wants to prove to his family that he's brujo. So he raises the dead and he accidentally resurrects Julian, who just will not go away. And they're trying to dis figure out why there's so many bodies going missing in the cemetery. Um, and it's a beautiful love story. I mean, a himbo and a very like straight lace, like doesn't really um, want to veer off his own path and like prove to his family what he like, what he is, which is the Brujo. Um, it, they're just like a perfect match. It's hilarious. It's loving and it's gentle and I love it. And I hope you read it. And my final book that I'm gonna show you is a book that I finished just last week and it is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. Um, this is a brutal read, it's realistic fiction. Um, it has a trigger content warning at the beginning of it that um, warns you of sexual abuse, assault, child abuse, kidnapping, and addiction. So you know what you're getting into when you read this book, but like, look at this cover, look, it's beautiful. Um, so this book is about Enchanted, who is 17 years old, and she dreams of becoming a singer. She's struggling to find her voice in a white suburban community. Um, and suddenly, a 28-year-old famous R&B artist takes her under his wing. And what looks like a fairy tale on the outside is like a waking nightmare on the inside. Corey, the R&B artist, turns out to be an abuser who takes advantage of the power and age dynamics in their relationship. Um, it was really hard to read at times, but it goes so fast because you just want to make sure she's okay. Um, I would say if you've read She Said by Jodi Cantor and Megan Tuohy, you should pick up this book because it really gives like an intersectional in-depth look at the Me Too movement for a 17-year-old aspiring artist, a Black 17-year-old aspiring artist um, who is facing some, like something that is currently happening in the entertainment industry that is not talked about and not believed. So I would pick this book up if you want more stories about the Me Too movement um, and you just want to read a really great book. It's beautifully written. It's very didactic, which sometimes I don't like, but for this, I really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, it's Grown by Tiffany G. Jackson. And now I'm going to throw it over to Andrea Hogan, one of our circulation assistants. Hi, I'm Andrea and I'm from Borrower Services. First book that I'm going to talk about is We Contain Multitudes. Who doesn't love a love story, especially when it's told with the added delight of reading other people's mail? Joe and Curl are a true case of opposites attract. 
Joe is a freshman, out, flamboyant, a lover of poetry, and proud of who he is. Pearl is a senior, surly, brooding, very masculine, and, at the start of the novel, not in touch with his feelings. Both boys share an English teacher who assigns her upperclassmen to write to an underclassman. The relationship develops through their letters as they gradually open up to each other, moving from acquaintance to friend to lover. Joe and Curl face all the perils of young love, their connection with each other, the struggles they have to preserve their relationship, and even the ways in which they manage to hurt each other as they fumble toward understanding are all so familiar that I soon forgot I was reading about two boys. We Contain Multitudes proves once again that true love and great writing transcend all boundaries. My next book is very new and it's entitled Vampires Get Old, Never Get Old. The appeal of vampires is universal, but vampires never get old, takes the archetypical vampire and turns him on his perfectly coiffed heterosexual head. It was refreshing to read a collection of short stories by, re by leading YA authors that are comprised of vampires from all walks of life. As I read, I encountered a cheerleading slayer, a gay native teen who summons the river boys to end his loneliness, a vampire with a heavy Instagram presence, a family of vampires deeply entrenched in the lore of New Orleans, which is a vampire stronghold, and a grief-stricken teen given seven nights to decide whether eternity is the antidote for the loss of her mother, just to name a few. Each tale is different, but the thread that connects them is the humanity of the vampire at the center of the story, and the longing each one has to find the one thing that will make everlasting life worthwhile. The stories are unique and thought-provoking, and each one is followed by a commentary and a central question for discussion. This is a perfect book for a teen or adult book group that's looking to expose its members to stories with bite. My final book is entitled Little White Lies, and it was such a fun book to read. Sawyer is a teenage female mechanic from the wrong side of the tracks with an unreliable mother. When her maternal grandmother Lillian Taft, from whom Sawyer's mother is estranged, visits Sawyer, she makes the girl an irresistible offer of money for college and a chance to find out the identity of her father. Once Sawyer leaves her grease-covered overalls behind, the fun really begins. She is swept into the world of the Southern Belle debutante, but these girls are not what they seem, and the secrets they harbor include a few Class A felonies. Sawyer is a fantastic narrator with a sharp wit and fairly multifaceted. The other Bells definitely fall into specific types, but their quirks and antics are so amusing that I was able to overlook that. The mystery of Sawyer's father takes a bit of a backseat to a twisted tale of revenge with frenemies making alliances and those who think they are above the law getting their comeuppance.